Okay. Can't get in here. There we go. Parents are their child's first teachers and Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome. May I have a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting from June 12th? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Anybody wishing to address the, uh, nope. May I have a motion for the approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Deanne, good news report. Well, good evening to all of you. Last week, the calendar officially told us that spring is gone and summer is here. If you we haven't really felt that in our weather this past week anyway, or at least the past couple of days. But I thought it would be appropriate to tell you about some of the summer offerings that we have going on through community education. Our team is providing valuable learning experiences for youth all summer long. And I wanted to just give you a few stats about the classes that we have um, for community education this year. We have 619 high school students taking summer school courses. They are earning credits by taking an online class, an in-person class. Um, also our ninth graders can take a class to get comfortable in their new high school. It's called Connections. They have English and math skills along with study skills that they're learning in a two week course. If you're out on the road, caution, we have 363 students taking driver's education this summer. They're learning the rules of the road with 30 hours of classroom instruction and then they have 12 hours behind the wheel, either as a driver or as an observer. So please watch for those white vehicles and hopefully they'll be watching for you as well. We have 166 students who are taking a Spanish immersion camp to keep their language skills um, sharp over the summer months or to expand their mind with lessons in literacy, technology, art, and coding. We have 148 sixth through 12th grade students who are participating in the Summer Youth Band Program. That program was pre previously run by the Sioux Falls Parks and Rec Department. Community Ed took over that class and is seeing very good success in the first year. The group had its first concert last night at Terrace Park with the Municipal Band. The next concert is July 6th at 6.30 at McKinnon Park. And the third and final concert of the summer is July 20th. That will be held at Edison Middle School at 6.30. If you're looking for a certified babysitter, there's 48 newly certified sitters in the Sioux Falls area thanks to our Super Sitters course. We've offered four classes since the start of summer break and all have been filled. It's a popular class, well sought after, uh, especially by preteens or those students who are going to be uh, watching their siblings maybe after school. For students who like to spend their summers on the water, 44 students have enrolled in kayaking courses at Family Park through community education. 32 students are taking stained glass classes. And to top it all off, like a partridge in a pear tree, we have two students enrolled in a very new course called bug eating. <laughs> That course is coming up in August, so we still have room for more enrollees. Um, bug eating, yes, it is actually a class that we're offering and we have an instructor that is going to teach about bug eating. 
So anyway, um, not quite your partridge in a pear tree, but you can see the expansive offering we have for students throughout the summer months offered through community education. If you total up all of those numbers that I just gave you, uh, it's about 1,422 registrations we have going on over the summer months, and that's not the entire list of classes. I just compiled some to give you a, a complete look at the things that are happening, um, educational programming that continues throughout the summer months. <coughs> so with that, the good news report, do you have any questions? I don't have questions, but thank you for all of the offerings. I think it's exciting that our, I think people trust the school district and they trust sending their kids to um, our district and so I think it's great that people can associate that um, with classes that are they know are going to be quality um, and there's such a variety that there's something for everybody to take so very good thank you not just kids but adults too mm -hmm. absolutely yes we have a ton of classes going on in the summer for for adults as well is there any bug eating classes I, I, you know if you want to get in that one it's i'm, like I'm sure i could bend the that. enrollment <laughs> rules i don't know if there's an age limit on it but i could bend that <laughs> limit for you um, but yes we're we're always looking for whatever um, the community is interested in particularly um, trying to to get a variety of classes so that there is something that appeals to all people, even the bug eating people. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. All right, are there any conflicts that need to be disclosed? Moving on. May I please have a motion for the approval of the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That carries. I need a motion for the supplemental consent agenda 9A, the claims to Sanford Healthcare System. So, so moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those signify, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That carries with one abstention by board member Ryder. Now to the reports of the superintendent. Thank you, President Tolke. We, our first two reports tonight will be regarding middle school Spanish immersion program and our middle school honors gifted ed program. Both of those reports will come to you from our middle school curriculum coordinator, Dr. Sandra Henry. It's a pleasure to be with you this evening to share these two reports. The first report, the Spanish immersion program update is part of one of our pathways for our middle for our students in Sioux Falls and in the fall of 2008 the Sioux Falls School District implemented the Spanish immersion program with its first kindergarten class and those students just completed eighth grade which completes the middle school Spanish immersion program in that Spanish immersion program at eighth grade the students continue to develop their Spanish fluency skills taking three classes a day in Spanish, social studies, science, and language arts. All of the communication and all of the resources in those classes are in Spanish. Then for the remainder of the day, the students take the rest of their courses in English, including math and English language arts and all of their encore classes. Because Spanish immersion students take five, on, five core classes each day, the opportunity to enroll in the encore classes is somewhat limited, and each year the administration is working to find ways to allow those kids to enroll in more and more encore classes. For example, the, the administration is looking at ways to, to measure whether students are proficient in the computer science course, and could they then enroll in a different class rather than taking the uh, ICT class in, in English and have make room for another encore class and they're working on that right now and they're trying really hard to help students get as many classes as possible and to leave eighth grade with a nice variety of encore classes. The Spanish immersion students in eighth grade who are identified as gifted may enroll this coming fall in the high school biology class along with the honors gifted ed students and they would be taking this class in English, and this would allow them to earn credit before ninth grade as allowed, as allowed by the waiver we have from the state of South Dakota. After completing eighth grade, when they are officially considered high school students, these students in the Spanish immersion program have the opportunity to take 
the Spanish State Course Equivalency Exam to earn high school credit in Spanish 1 and or Spanish 2. In order to earn this credit, the students must pass each exam with 85% or higher to receive one unit of non-graded high school credit for each course. This year, our eighth grade students and our fifth grade students for the first time took a Spanish immersion language, language proficiency uh, test. It's sponsored by the American Council on Teachers of Foreign Language, and our students did remarkably well. In fact, 69% of the students scored in the advanced tier in reading, and 43% of these eighth graders uh, scored at the advanced tier in listening, and all students scored at the intermediate, mid, or above in writing and speaking. This course, or this assessment is an online adaptive assessment assessing four language domains. The reading and listening sections are scored by a computer and those scores were received immediately. The writing and speaking sections are hand scored by an Avant uh, person who specializes in looking at those scores and all of the students across the nation who take that that assessment and those are available in five to seven business days. Edison recently mailed those results home to students and we are very, very happy to see how our students performed. In fact, if you, if you, let's see, Deanne, you want to help me here? Yeah. Our fifth grade students took this exam as well as their eighth grade and we saw a nice growth from sixth grade through, the, the from fifth grade, excuse me, to the eighth grade. And this is an example of how the criteria for, for scoring those student areas would look like and they're leveled so that they're, they, you can either be a novice, intermediate or advanced and within each of those levels are sub-level of a low, mid, or high, and then they're, they're each descriptor for how the student is performing based on the language of the descriptor. So this is what the writing descriptors would look like, and each student would then be scored at their level, ranging from a one to a nine in those areas, novice, intermediate, and advanced. And when we look at our current eighth graders in the reading, we had 50% score in the low advanced and 19% score in the mid advanced, which is very high. There's only one tier higher. And this is an assessment given to seventh through 12th graders. So, and then in writing, our students in the eighth grade, 44% scored at a intermediate high and 12% scored at an advanced low, and we had similar scores in the listening and speaking. So when you look at our students compared to these benchmarks and these descriptors, we are very, very happy with how they are progressing in their Spanish language proficiency. So I would ask the board to acknowledge the program update for the Middle School Spanish Immersion Program at Edison Middle School, and I'll answer any of your questions. Any questions for Sandy? No, good news. May I have a motion to acknowledge the program update? So moved. Second. <clears throat> any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, that carries. Thank you. Well, my final report to you this evening is an update on the Middle School Honors Gifted Ed program. Similar to the Spanish Immersion program, this program has fully implemented through grade eight this year. In the fall of 2014, Edison Middle School began with its first sixth grade students and then in the following year, the seventh grade was added and this last fall, we completed the implementation at the eighth grade level. Middle school students identified as gifted through our gifted ed assessment process are eligible to enroll in the program. And though these students take three honors classes at Edison, honors English language arts, honors social study and honors science. And in addition to these classes, each honor student is enrolled in their appropriate math class, whether it be general ed, regular math, accelerated or double accelerated, 
<clears throat> or a high school math class. Next fall, we'll have a total of 237 students enrolled in this program at Edison. The National Gifted Ed Standards and the South Dakota Content Standards are used to align and expand the curriculum, meeting the academic needs of these highly gifted kids. The students really are required to apply high-level thinking and critical thinking skills and collaboration skills, working together to master challenging, in-depth, and complex content. They explore and research areas of interest to solve problems and are giving opportunities to apply what they have learned in real life situations. The sixth and seventh grade honors science focuses on the field of engineering and we use the resources from the Project Lead the Way and FOSS science kits and they provide students with lots of opportunities to solve very hands-on and practical world problems. Students are presented with the science content through, pro content through projects and problem-based learning, and they use industry-leading technology to solve those problems. Students in eighth grade science honors take high school biology for high school credit. Completing high school biology in eighth grade will allow these students to enroll in chemistry or in accelerated chemistry in ninth grade. The English language arts resources were purchased this year as for as part of the K-12 English language arts study and are included in the FY18 budget. So with our implementation of the Middle School Honors Gifted Ed program complete, I ask the board to acknowledge the pro program update. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Any questions? Hearing none, may, may I have a motion to acknowledge the program update? So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? No, but I would like to just take a second to thank Dr. Henry for her dedication to the Sioux Falls School District and the middle school uh, curriculum, particularly when you said this is my final report. Uh, I, I expect this is your final report to the board. Thank you for your career here and your dedication to our kids. Thank you. It's been an honor to serve and work with this school district. It's an amazing place of learning. Thank you all very much. Thanks. Thank you. I just I'd like to add, a, Kent beat me to the punch there, but I was going to thank you for your 25 years of service to the Sioux Falls School District. Um, and as Kent also said, especially these last few years as middle school curriculum, you know, we went in not knowing what we're, well, maybe not what we were doing, but had a little bit of inkling what we were doing with the Spanish Immersion Program as well as the honors, but um, you really spearheaded that effort with your team and thank you for, for that and your 25 years in the district. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And that motion carries. All right, our next report is an elementary tier two program update. You've heard about this program before. I'm here to talk to us tonight is Brenda Bernard on, on this issue. All right, good evening. Um, the purpose of tonight's report is to give you an update on where we're at in the Tier 2 pilot program. I, um, the Tier 2 program is a coordinated system of intervention in um, six of our elementary schools. It's important to remember that the program is designed as a focus to be um, provide prevention, proactive approaches to helping children develop more successful social emotional skills rather than thinking of it as a program where children go when they misbehave or as a consequence. That's not the design of the program. We began in 2014 at Annie Sullivan and Terry Redland Elementary Schools with an expansion in 2016 with two four additional elementary schools, Cleveland, Garfield, Hawthorne, and Hayward. At this time, we have staff in each of those buildings um, coordinating the Tier 2 program with one certified teacher and a behavior facilitator per school with all building staff being trained in the programs that we're utilizing. 
Additional research um, was reviewed to prepare for tonight as we examined our framework for the Tier 2 program. Um, what we found out is that most effective programs are delivered school-wide with tiered approaches. Also, they include systematic professional development. At this time, we are training our teachers and our staff, um, all staff in our buildings, utilizing the Boys Town Well-Managed Schools training, as well as nonviolent crisis intervention training by the CPI. Um, all building staff who have contact with children um, are included in the well-managed training to provide that consistent vocabulary throughout the day, whether children are in the classroom, the lunchroom, or out in, in, at recess. We continue to provide training each summer for any new, newly hired staff. Embedded social skill development is also one of the research-based practices, that that social development is taught um, intentionally, but also is embedded throughout the day. Our Boys Town curriculum teaches clear routines and procedures and then provides that high rate of positive reinforcement for students utilizing skills that will help them become successful adults. The research also tells us that effective programs have supplemental targeted instruction in small groups with individualized behavior plans. At this time, we have our tier two teachers providing that direct instruction in small groups our behavior facilitator then carries out that instruction into other school environments by providing that generalized practice. Our classroom teachers are highly involved in the process and they provide that reinforcement with the additional instruction um, throughout the day as children need it also to be um, safe in schools. Uh, each child who is part of the tier two program has an individualized behavior plan that is developed by a school team. A very um, critical component is having systematic and collaborative approaches for collecting and utilizing data. At this time, each of our six schools are using the Behavior Matters Review 360 program to collect information about children on a daily basis. It's a live program where staff can enter um, how a child is doing, maybe um, enter a challenge that they might be facing that somebody later in the day might need to know about in order to support them appropriately through the day. So this program provides a live way that staff can share about children's successes and challenges and then utilize that information um, instructionally to know how to best serve them and um, plan for their day um, the following day and throughout the week. The teaching team works um, and meets on a regular basis to talk about these um, kids who are receiving the support, um, to look for those behavioral patterns and then determine the next best steps in serving them. The research also showed us that effective plans um, have planned procedures for addressing severe behavioral episodes with effective de-escalation strategies. That is part of our nonviolent crisis prevention um, training, intervention training, as well as boys' talent, that we have highly structured response systems to support children and support staff during those times. Classroom teachers need to have planned procedures for what to do in a crisis to keep everyone safe and cared for. By having these programs and procedures um, outlined, it takes the guesswork out of what to do and how to respond in a um, crisis with a consistent plan. Outcomes of the Tier 2 program. During this last school year, uh, 274 students with social and emotional delays received direct instruction through the Tier 2 program. All students in those pilot schools were supported with curriculum to improve their social skill development. 64 students did exit the program. Reasons included successful accomplishment of their goals, moving out of that pilot school into another school, or placement in a more intensive program such as Bridges. In addition, staff were supported with research-based practices so that they know what they are doing is right and good in helping children and families. The addition of the behavior facilitators provided supports to students and staff to implement individual plans throughout the day. The Review 360 program provides continual data tracking for instructional decisions and are through discussion with the building principals, we know that the programs are being delivered with integrity, utilizing those research-based 
practices and training, um, and we really need to extend the credit of, of um, making progress in our schools to all of the staff in those schools. It takes that whole staff um, utilizing the same consistent program responses, vocabulary, um, reinforcement, everything in a, in a big system to get that needle to move and to see that our children and our families are making more progress. Um, we continue to have challenges on a daily basis with our young students. Um, but we do believe that the research that we uh, reviewed last year and this year is supporting the framework that we are utilizing moving forward with providing those supports to keep all staff, all students um, safe and help our little ones who have delays gain the skills they need to become successful adults. At this time, we are asking that you acknowledge the elementary tier two update an expansion of the program to the Laura Wilder Elementary during the 2017 and 18 school year. Questions? Any questions? <clears throat> well, thank you. Hearing none, may I have a motion to acknowledge the elementary tier two report? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Doug, would you join me up here, please? <clears throat> Open your box. <laughs> Let's just hold that while I read my little resolutions. Whereas Douglas C. Morrison has served the Sioux Falls School District 49-5 for the past six years since July 2011. As a valued school board member, its vice president and president. And whereas Mr. Morrison has during these six years ably served as board representative to the following committees. Yeah. Budget Review Committee, Calendar Committee, PATH Committee, STI Council, Chamber Board Business Networking, District Insurance, Teacher of the Year, Chamber of Commerce, as well as a contributing member of the City County School Meetings. Legislative Liaison and on Negotiating Terms for the Board. It's gonna take me a while to get through this. Whereas during his tenure on the school board, the school district moved forward with its building plan for construction with the Susan B. Anthony Elementary School, the new Sonia Sotomayor Elementary School, the new field house at Howard Woodfield, and the new hub building at the campus of STI. And whereas Mr. Morrison encouraged a commitment to understanding and valuing diversity, as well as the importance of providing multiple pathways for student success. And whereas, Doug's commitment to excellence in education has enhanced opportunities for countless children, and his commitment to increasing involvement of citizens in the decision-making process regarding educational programs has continued to the overall improvement of this district's instructional program. And whereas Mr. Morrison has ably served in these capacities at considerable personal sacrifice and with an outstanding dedication in placing children first in all his decisions. Whether considering budgets, boundaries, busing, calendars, curriculum, or policies. And whereas we, the school board, wish to express deep appreciation and thanks to Douglas Morrison on behalf of the members of the school board, the administration, and the entire school district. Now, therefore, be it resolved 
that this resolution be spread upon the minutes of this meeting of the School Board of Sioux Falls School District 495 held Monday, June 26, 2017, and a copy of this resolution be given to Doug C. Morrison. Whereupon a motion was made. So moved. And seconded. Second. And the majority vote of the school board adopting the foregoing resolution. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, I didn't start crying. <laughs> Doug, thank you so much. <laughs> I'll start out. Um, I made it through without balling, so that was a good thing. Um, this, from the beginning, Doug's always been supportive, and the last year I really leaned on you, and I appreciate your help with that. It's hard to be a leader without someone telling you what to do, and I called upon you a lot, and you would give me some choices and say you be the leader, and I really, really appreciate that. So I'll sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything, but mainly um, when I when Todd came in, he said you're you're smiling. You must be happy, and I'm like, no, I'm smiling because I'll cry if I really think about what's going on here tonight. So when I go home tonight, it'll probably hit me. So um, it's been a great ride. Um, you know. Um, Thank you to my fellow board members. You guys are awesome. Um, you know, every vote that you guys always take uh, was always for the kids, right? And that's the way it should be. Everything was um, and always is about them. And um, Dr. Maher, thank you for your leadership and, and uh, really the whole senior team. Um, you know, I'm just uh, humbled and honored that my community would place the trust in me to be able to serve in this uh, great position. I honestly don't know why there isn't 100 people running for this position every year because it's a life-changing experience and I, I wish more people understood that. Uh, it's really the impact as I as, what I take away from it more than anything. It's changed me and hopefully made, made me a better person and opened up my eyes to a lot of things in the community and and mostly to all the dedicated uh, teachers, administrators, uh, everybody in the support staff involved in the district that, you know, put it on the line every day for our, you know, 25,000 kids or so. Uh, it's it's uh, amazing what they do and the de dedication what they do and they, they don't do it for uh, for for glory and public glory and, and certainly not money. It's all for the love of kids and that's a, that's really a humbling experience uh, to be able to serve alongside of you all. So thank you for all the support over the years and and, uh, and many, many, many times answering very silly silly questions, right? But they were um, all from from the heart and hopefully to make, to, to make the best decision possible. So um, bottom line is uh, thank you and uh, I'll, be, I'll be cheering for all of you. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. All right, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. This meeting's adjourned.